So we were talking about like ego. I did a team VOD review last night and we were talking a little about like how ego was like hindering somebody from like performing um, because like the ego was like causing conflict and all this kind of stuff. And I was thinking about it and I was like, holy crap, ego is actually such a such an interesting concept. So <clears throat> you guys remember the, 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 the psychologist guy, the therapist guy that I, I coached on Doomfist, the guy that I did the, the, the psychology and Overwatch 2 video on? Well, he had this really nice little wall of text that he sent me about ego, because I was talking about ego. And he was saying that ego, the reason why ego is such a problem is because it has a tendency to keep you in homeostasis. Um, whereas your your brain it says, I'm great as I am, I'm perfect as I am, I don't want to change, I don't need to get better, what I'm doing right now is the correct thing. Um, and that's why ego is so dangerous for improvement is because it tells you that it's actively setting up roadblocks for improvement by by uh, not wanting to improve because of what I am right now. So like, let's say, you know, you're here and you want to get to here, right? Ego says, no, this is fine. We don't want to change. What I'm doing right now is perfect. It's not me that's the problem. I'm perfect as I am. And it, it, it has a tendency to not take in outside perspectives or even in, it even fights. It's not just about like um, outside perspectives. It fights your own internal thought processes of second guessing yourself and questioning yourself and thinking about things that you could be doing better, right? Yeah, we might do raffle. Um, that's what ego does. Ego keeps you in that state. It says... And, that, and that's why it's such a problem for improvement, right? Um, people that have big egos generally are more of a, they can improve, but they have to find ways to where their ego is so big <laughs> that winning is more of a priority than thinking where I'm at is good. So like uh, having an ego is not wanting to be the best. Having an ego is thinking I am already and will always be the best and that there's nothing wrong with the way I'm doing things, right? Um, you can have a, bra a bravado or a braggadocious behavior, um, but if you truly think that where you're at is perfect, then that's the truly toxic ego. Now, I was thinking about this, and ego is why people people blame their teams for a loss. I mean, e that is the perfect definition of ego. It's where I did everything right. It was those guys who were the problem. It's like the psychosis, right? Where it's like there is an inability to see anything wrong with the way I'm doing things. That's the best definition of ego out there, um, even going beyond Overwatch. And it, it keeps you. It keeps you. In a, it keeps you in the state that you're in, right? There's nothing that I could have done differently. Uh, and we've all known people like that, right? Ego is not saying, yeah, you know, you got slam dunk and uh, uh, celebrating after after scoring. That's not necessarily ego, right? Um, but anyway, so the, what I was thinking about is the reason why ego is so bad is sometimes it disguises itself really, really well. Okay, so. We live in a world right now where social media, um, and I, I promise this won't be just be a harder social media is bad, but we live in a world where social media makes it really easy for people to find communities. So let's talk about this. So communities, right? But if any of you guys have ever functioned in a team, you'll know that community to be successful needs conflict. Um, it's productive, positive, conflict for teams to be successful um, and this isn't just to win games but a family group a friend group at some point in time somebody uh, is going to do something wrong or needs to do adjust this or they ought not to do this or we need to talk about this we need to and you need productive and positive conflict now you need to have relationships with those people so that they trust you enough to talk about those things with you and trust that your opinion. So first off, you need don't just need product, product you, need, you need trust first, right? So trust needs to happen first. But ultimately, if all we're doing in a community is telling each other how great we are, that's stagnation, okay? That's stagnation. And not only is it stagnation, but this is, this is where it gets really juicy, okay, guys? Check this out. It's stagnation because hive mind which is what I'd say a, a an only positive uh, or uh, 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 um, inbred community. Hive mind is just a really big ego. It's a group think ego. Because if all you do is hear your own opinions echo chambered by other people, then that's the definition of ego. Right. 
So all we do is we think, all we do is we hear our opinions parroted over and over and over and over again, then there is no room for growth. There's no room for change. And people pursue this because it's comfortable. Um, and you don't get your ideas challenged. You don't get your thoughts, political, social, uh, game oriented, right? Challenged, right? You don't get to see things from other people's sides. And, and as a result, you actually miss something, right? Um, now the problem is, is we often end up in circumstances like these because we say, oh, you know, we don't want to, we want to avoid the toxicity of fill in the blank, right? We don't want to, you know, I'm so tired of this and I'm, you know, this is such a, you know, whatever, right? But the problem with that is that often becomes a very blanket excuse for just us avoiding even positive conflict. Um, I knew a lot of people, you probably, probably know a lot of people here where they say, oh, you know, sorry, I don't do the whole conflict, you know, I don't do the toxicity thing, you know, we're, we're a very PMA, you know, community, right? But the, the problem with that is, is that's a very unnatural thing. Um, and some of the most toxic communities that you'll ever find are the, are the PMA ones. You guys ever have experience with that? I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to name any communities. But the ones that are so PMA that it's like, a, hey, we're happy here, you know, we don't do that here, right? And it's a everybody thinks alike, everybody is this, and they're, they're like, we it's a it's a it's a culture for victimhood, it's a culture for for blaming other people, it's a culture where there's a lot of toxicity, and what ends up happening is the toxicity comes out somewhere, right? It has to come out somewhere. The, the conflict, the frustration has to come out somewhere, and it usually comes out backhanded, it comes out behind people's backs, it's not done in a productive and healthy way, because the, the thing is, is conflict doesn't just go away, right? Conflict doesn't just go away. It has to come out in some way. And usually when you force it and pretend it's not there, it comes out in unproductive ways, right? So it becomes very repressed ways. And then that is a very unhealthy thing. Um, and you can take this analogy and apply it to a lot of things, a lot of things. What we want to do is we want our conflict to be used pr productively. Um, and you should, as a person, be pursuing conflict in a productive way as much as you possibly can. Now, let me de define what conflict means. Conflict does not mean fighting. Conflict does not mean arguing. Conflict doesn't even mean debating, right? It might even be, not even be an express disagreement. It's a vulnerability of exposing yourself to is there anything that I could be doing better? Or what's the best way of doing this? You could expose yourself to conflict internally. Um, in other words, I could be thinking, is there anything I could be doing better with my coaching? You know, maybe I could be doing better this, right? I wonder if this is the proper way of doing things, guys. And conflict is such a, like, a, a, a hated word, but there needs to be a little bit of struggle, right? Conflict, guys, is lifting weights. That's a conflict with your muscles. It's pushing them, you know? It's not letting them stay where they're at. That's what happens to muscles when it happens. They turn to jello. So. For example, if you guys are in my community and you do something and I do something or I communicate or I put out content or I do something that you guys think is like just crappy, right? Or it's not very good. I want you guys to be comfortable enough in a constructive and productive manner to come and criticize me. That's why I do those feedback forms, right? The most that I've ever improved as a content creator and as a coach, as a streamer is through feedback forms where I'm opening myself up to people that I trust and care about to give me constructive feedback. And without that, I would not be anywhere near where I am right now. The vulnerability is the key thing. And the only way the vulnerability happens is with trust. And this is why being kind is so important is because you look at some of these like inbred communities, these fake PMA overly uh, exclusive communities. And the reason why they have developed to that point is because they are so used to being quote unquote abused so that then they turn in on themselves and turn everything else out. So it's also on you as a criticizer or, critic, uh, or or as somebody that is critical or providing feedback for you to be respectful and kind with it to not burn people for opening themselves up. Because if I'm coaching so-and-so player and they, you know, open up their vulnerabilities or the things that they're bad at, they're not really sure about, and I just completely toast them, then I have given them good motivation to not do that again. And then a lot, then I've removed that avenue to build up conflict. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you know, enlightened centrist whatsoever here. Um, you know, bad is bad, good is good, 
I think, regardless in, in a lot of different ways here. However, this is why things like social media, um, this is why like really, really tight knit communities can be a little bit dangerous is because you um, put yourself in the ego hive mind and it's shun out conflict and you shun out criticism and you don't expand or grow your ideas. In fact, nothing makes an idea stronger than criticism. All of my ideas, I try to expose myself to criticism. Uh, all of my personal beliefs, even ones that I am not really willing to negotiate on because I just believe they're right. I want to know what other think. Echo chambers, right. And we live in a world right now to where you can, if you want to, you can shut out all criticism, all, all, all com completely. Never in a, in a world without being literally a hermit could you do that. And not only can you shut out all criticisms, you can actively lock yourself in with millions of people that are exactly like you. And that is both a good thing and a very, very, very dangerous thing. It, there are many social media sites that are political, social um, echo chambers. Um, and so what I encourage you guys to do is like, well, like what, what, what do we take from this? <sighs> um... Assume that you don't know everything about everything and assume that you're probably wrong about some things and be willing to expose yourself to new ideas. And when you think that you're the one educating other people, ask questions, don't assume. Maybe you're the one that needs to be educated. And if they are the ones that need to be educated, the worst thing that you could do about it is go at it in a, 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 a negative way because then that makes the conflict internalized because then they don't want to expose, they don't want to open up their ideas to you anymore. Um, yeah, a lot of subreddits or echo chambers. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of things, a lot of Discord servers, a lot of, you know, I hope that my community never becomes inbred. I hope that we always become more, but the thing is, it's like, it's a lot like uh, genetical things where like the longer it stays isolated, the worse it gets. It's a lot like genetics in that regard, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Right, so we just need to have a little bit of humility and think that we don't always understand everything. I am not near enough of a humble person, but one thing I try to do whenever I can is admit ignorance whenever I can. Everybody thinks they're a smart guy. Everybody does, right? But do you have the, at least try to have the humility that I, maybe I don't know everything about everything. We also live in a world where information is immediately accessible, but it's also very, e which means it's very easy to be opinionated about stuff that you only know a surface level about. Um, and then therefore we have feel like that gives us the right to have a commentary on things. Um, but obviously that's, that's gone very poorly many times, but anyway, ego is dangerous thing. Yeah. You just confirm your own biases. Correct. Correct. So we have to be careful about that. We have to be careful about that. <laughs>